Synthesizer fans all over the world, how you doing? Marty here, back in the man cave with my friends at Gig Performer and Cherry Audio. In this video, I want to show you how Gig Performer can be a phenomenal virtual workbench where you can place all of your fancy Cherry Audio synths, connect them up any way you like, control them any way you like, layer them up, split them across the keyboard, sync up arps and drum machines and all that kind of stuff, and even be able to choose a bunch of presets all from different synths and save that as like a mega preset where you can dump that, where you can dump that any way you like into a rack space and start playing with it immediately. Mm. So if you are at all a synth fan, you're not gonna wanna miss this. Gonna wanna. Now we have been spoiled absolutely rotten this year by Cherry Audio and every single release, ha they've just knocked it out of the park. You've got the CR78 based on that famous retro drum machine. The Rhodes Chroma. The Whirlybird 140B, which is a phenomenal Whirly emulation. The infamous Blue 3 organ, which is one of my favorites. The snarly, angry little puppy that is Atomica. And last but not least, and just released, the P10, based on the sequential circuits, Prophet 10. Yum. Cherry Audio, I've just released SynthStack 5. And so not only do you get all the gorgeous synths from SynthStack 4, you now get all of these brand new releases in Synth Stack 5. Huh? Playing around with these on their own is fantastic fun. However, why play with one synth when you can play with multiple synths all at the same time? So how does all this work? We do all this in a rack space. Now a rack space basically is like I said earlier, a virtual workbench where you can place all your synths, connect them up and all that malarkey. Here we have a simple layer, two instruments. And in the wiring view here, you can treat that as like the back end of the rack mount. This is where we plug stuff in. We have two of Cherry Audio synths here, the Chroma and the gorgeous P10. The red MIDI in block is basically your controller. And these red cables here, I'll just take one away. These are your MIDI cables that are plugging into your synths. And after all these years, I still never tire of drawing these bad boys in. On the other side of your instrument block here, you have your audio outputs. And this is where you can route your audio wherever you like. So as a summary, here's your controller. We have two virtual MIDI cables going into each synth, and then the audio from those synths are going into a mixer, and then going out to your speakers. And how do you actually choose one of your synths? Right click anywhere on a blank space, and you'll get a list of all your VSTs, and you just simply choose one. Let's go for uh, that gorgeous drum machine, CR78. 
up it comes and there's your block. So let's have a listen to this simple layer and as I play I'll talk you through what the controls are doing. Very self-explanatory to be honest. Here's a P10 and this slider here is set up for volume for the P10. We can also with this knob change the pan and this knob here is altering that cut off and why not hit some phaser with this button here gorgeous now let's bring chroma in with this fader which we can also pan with this knob and change Chroma's cut off with this knob. Yeah. So this is very simple to set up and you can completely customize this to however you want. You can have it super simple, super complicated, whatever you like. Hit the edit tab. And here we have a full list of all the different controls which are called widgets. Uh, you've got knobs and sliders and buttons and lions and tigers and bears, oh my. So let's quickly add a control. Let's bring a, a metal knob in. There we go. We can resize, like so. Now you only have basically two things to do. You need to get your controller to control that knob, which we'll do now. Very simple. Go down here where it says learn and turn a controller of your choice. And instantly that recognizes that and we've got our controller turning our knob or our widget. There we are. Now the next step is to get that widget to control literally whatever you want. Highlight the widget, the knob, and go down to the bottom right here and choose what you would like to control. Now the simplest way to do this is to click learn parameter and it brings up your synth. Now all you have to do is basically choose the control that you want that widget to control and wiggle it a bit. So just for randomness sake, I'm gonna choose the high EQ control there. There we go. And you can instantly see it turning. Now you've got fancy stuff like um, shapes and text labels. I love these tape labels, a bit of masking tape that you can write on. There we go, look at that. <laughs> now let's quickly have a look at a split because you set that up slightly differently. Here's the split here. Let's have a listen first. This is Atomica. Uh, our knob three. Calm down, boy, calm down. And on the right side of the keyboard, we have the GX80. Let's add some mega reverb. Now, how do we set up a split point? Let's hit the wire and view. And here you can see I've used two MIDI in blocks. One MIDI in block is controlling Atomica and the other is controlling the GX80 and the CR78. Setting up a split point is super simple. I don't want Atomica running any higher than um, where I want to. I think it's G here. So basically you set your upper limit by hitting learn in the upper section here and pressing a key. Now, similarly, also, on the other side, we can set the lower point for the GX80 and the CR78 to not interfere with Atomica. And you do that on the lower end here by clicking Learn and choosing the note that you want. Now let's go back to that layer for a second because I want to talk about variations. Now here we have uh, that same patch that you heard earlier. Wow, super bright. Let me set up a variation here very quickly by choosing new variation. And we're going to call this soft. There we go. Let's call the other one bright. 
Now, what we can do here is set up variations in that rack space with all your widgets. So in this bright one here, we'll have all these things turned up bright so that it's like mega bright. But in this variation here, let's turn down things so they're a bit more mellow. And I'm also going to turn off the phaser. Kind of like that. But let's go a stage further. Let's pan these very slightly as well. So we've got two variations, a bright and a soft, and you can seamlessly switch between the two. And you can make up as many variations as you want. Fantastic. Now we're going to go back to that mega synth patch that you heard right at the very start. Here's that one here, you know, with all the drums and stuff. That particular humongous patch has four of Cherry Audio synths going on. And I love the way all that sounds. But I want to leave the drums out and save this as a mega preset. Let me just drag the drums out of the way just for a second. All we need to do is highlight the sections that we want to save. So we've got the MIDI in block saved and three of those synths without the drums. Right click and save as a favorite. And you can call this whatever you like. Save it. Say we go back now into that other layer. Highlight some blocks and delete them out of the way. Right click and choose favorites. You'll now see Humongatroid. And wait for this. It's brought up all of those synths and all of those presets baked into one big mega preset. And then you can just connect these up any way you like. I'm just gonna quickly put that into that four channel mixer and you can hear. <laughs> That preset is there instantly. So much of a time saver. Wow. Boys and girls, let me introduce you to the mega knob. Basically, I can control a whole bunch of widgets with just one knob on my controller. What's happening here is because each widget controls literally anything you want, you can map those all to one controller like I have here and control all different types of stuff all at the same time with just one controller. Now, in this instance, I've set up these dials here to control the tuning of all these four synths. And over here, these dials here are controlling the pan. And there's some frequency cutoff resonance type stuff going on with the sliders. And they're all getting sorted out by just that one knob. And it gives you Something like this. Yeah, baby. So why am I showing you all this? Well, when you go and purchase Synstack 5, you'll get your very own version of Gig Performer for free. It's called Gig Performer free and with it you can dip your toes into the gig performer universe and find out for yourself how crazy powerful gig performer is for sound design synth patch creation all the types of things i've shown you in this video and if that isn't enough if you already own the full version of gig performer head over to the partner section on the website you can get discounts on synth stack 5 vice versa if you buy synth stack 5 from cherry audio you can get discounts on the full version of Gig Performer. And if you think Gig Performer free is pretty powerful, wait to see what the full version can do. Now, remember to hit those links below for more info. And until next time, I'll see you later in it.